Whew. Nothing greater than worshiping the king and getting in his presence. But see, there's something you have to do. You have to worship him. No worship, no presence. The, the word says the Father seeks those who will worship him in truth and spirit. He's looking for us. I don't want him to pass me by. <laughs> oh, God is good. All the time. Praise you, Lord. How many of y'all know there's a battle going on? If you don't, you're in trouble. Because there are casualties in the battle. And if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. Amen? So you got a battle. You got to be a fighter, not a flighter. Too many people flight and don't fight. Would you turn it down? Galatians chapter 5, please. Just bend it. Thank you. Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you look marvelous tonight. Galatians 5, is everybody there? In verse 1, let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you become. Stand fast. You know what that means? Hold on. Don't let go of the ski rope. Hold on. Hold on there, or stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, or the word means freedom, by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know, the fight right now is to holding on to your freedom. How many of y'all know you got to hold on to your freedom? And that's where the fight is it. So many people are just easily letting go of their freedom. You know, the word tells us that when people lose revelation, when they lack revelation from God, that they, the restraints are removed from them. And that is known as the restraints of the flesh. The reason why people lose revelation from God is because of the lack of connection. The lack of getting in God's presence. The lack of feeding on his word. And his promises. See, because if you're not being fed by him, you're being fed by something else. That's why people go back in drugs, alcohol, pornography, and all the other foolishness. Doctrines of demons and everything else. They're actually looking to be free. And we're, we want freedom. That's why he's called, you know, being free is like getting high. I love to get high. Man, I want to stay high all the time. I stay as high as I can to stay as close to him. I want to stay drunk in the spirit. You know why? Because people who are drunk don't care. They just don't care. The only thing they care about is staying drunk. Man, I, I used to get, stay up for days trying to stay high. Costs a lot of money and a lot of problems until I met the Most High. See, when I met the Most High, <laughs> now the drinks are on the house. That's what that's where their flame came from. It was a flame of high. So we got to stay drunk all the time, but you got to get in. If you don't get in, then you're not changing. You fight to get into God's presence. Even when your flesh doesn't like it, you just grab your flesh by the neck and throw it in God's presence. Get in there. Why? Because I can't stand you the way you are. So you fight for God's presence. 
You know, did you ever go to a football game or a basketball game or a sports and be in the bandstands? And you're watching and you're seeing, you know, like, man, I'd like to play that. Well, you can play it now. You're no longer, get off the bandstand. Get off the bleachers and dive in. Now you can play, you can dance, you can run, you can worship, you can drink, you can fall down. You can do all this. And nobody is going to laugh at you. I hope. Ain't no promises on that. Because we do some crazy stuff when we're drunk. Galatians chapter 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom by which Christ has made us free. And don't be entangled in the bondage of the world that gives you things from the world. Especially the influences of the world. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, in other words, if you become religious, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every, one, every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. In other words, these are works of the flesh to try to become religious. You know, there's a lot of religion out there. It's not about how much makeup you wear or whether you have shorts on or long pants or short pants or whatever. God judges by the heart. Believe me, I've been at some religious places where they got women up on top of the roof doing roofs with dresses on. They're roofing with dresses because of their religious belief system. That ain't free. So they believe if they stay like that, it's going to please God. No, that's religious garbage. He who has a pure heart and clean hands pleases God. Amen? So don't let anyone judge you in course of your dressing like, you know. <laughs> Should I go there? <laughs> we already heard that once, right? But for those who didn't hear it, if you dress like a hooker, or you dress like a pimp, it's not pleasing to God. Because then you're trying to bring attraction to yourself by how you dress. Your beauty should come from the inside. Does everybody understand that? The beauty of a person should come from the inside, not the outside. Because when the beauty is there on the inside, it's there on the outside. Okay, let's go to the next part. Is everybody okay? You might have to lock the door. Hallelujah. Verse 4. You have become estranged from Christ, you who tempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from the plan of God or grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? He says this persuasion does not come from Jesus who calls you. A little leaven, the word leaven means evil. A little evil leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you that in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. In other words, we are to be holding fast. Holding. <laughs> Don't let go of your freedom. Don't let go of your liberty. Don't let go. Falling back into religion and self-righteousness and self-posed religions, false belief systems. Again, we've spoke about this already, but so many people are actually selling their freedom. Amen. Just like Esau sold his birthright, and they don't even realize it. They're selling it for lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Just how Eve sold her freedom. Amen? He said, and this persuasion doesn't come from the Lord. This influence comes from Satan's influential network system. Amen? In 2 Peter chapter 2.
So we must fight for freedom. That's holding on to your freedom. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2. Hold on to your health. Hold on to your position. In other words, stand fast. You must fight for position. There's a territorial fight. You must fight for your territory. You must fight for the house that you're involved in. God's got sent, God's placed you in. You fight for this place. You don't come against it. You fight for it. Amen? Amen. This is a unit. Do you ever see MASH on TV? For some of you that Google it one day. We're a MASH unit. That's what this is about. It's to raise up warriors quick. What we get here in 30 days takes you 30 years. Because God's made it that way. He put meat in a bottle. Oh, yes. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Let's speak it. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they what? Allure through the loss of the flesh, through lewdness, through the ones, the ones who actually escaped from those who live in error. So what he's, he's saying is, he's, through these empty words of deception, these individuals that have escaped the corruption of the world and the lust of the world, they've sold out their freedom and gone back to the world. While they promise them liberty or freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For if after they've escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle themselves and, and, and overcome, the latter end is what? Worse for them than the what? Beginning, because what does the word say? The demons come back seven times more. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of the righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it happened to them according to the true proverb of dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed to her wallowing in mire. Taken in by great swelling words of emptiness. In other words, with false promises, false freedom. This emptiness is the area of, it's true meaning of false perceptions. Emptiness. And people partake in these things, not even realizing it. That's why you have to be careful, especially the news and people associations and everything else. Magazines newspapers, all of this stuff that can corrupt you. TV, music, all of this stuff that can corrupt you. We can corrupt ourselves by our own will. Instead of surrendering will, we're still fighting for our will. They are slaves of corruption. Slaves of sin, and these are evil persons. Even though that some of them escaped from the pollution of the world, but yet they sold their freedom. They fell back. The word talks about the great falling away. We are in it. There's not, look at where there's a great harvest, there's a great falling away. They, again, they've exchanged their freedom for slavery by selling their birthright for fame, fortune, lust, Exchanging the will of God for the will of self. This is happening all over. And Matthew 7. That means to hold on to something. You are, in fact, the word stand means that you're not going to be moved. You are fighting for that position. Matthew 7. Verse 15. If you fight for your healing, 
You fight for everything. If there's no fight, there's no victory. And Matthew 7, 15. Is everybody there? What does it say? Beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are what? Ravenous wolves. In other words, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to say they're Christians. You got to be careful. You'll know them by their fruit. You will know them by their what? Fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit and a bad tree bears bad fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is what? Cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will what? You will know them. False prophets and teachers and doctrines and traditions of men. Many are still not willing to let go or have started to pick up these things. They've been taken out of the spirit and into the flesh. Taken out of the spirit and into the flesh. You know, technology has brought us into a place where we are dependent on it. Does everybody understand that? Technology has brought mankind into a place that is dependent on technology. Of course, you still have another nations where technology hasn't fully reached, but they're still rubbing two sticks together. Does everybody understand that? They're still living in a culture that hasn't advanced yet. But the culture that has advanced is now being ruled by technology. We are dependent on technology. But we can't become independent in the area where we are independent from technology, where we are dependent on God. So if we're using technology to advance the kingdom of God, it's going to be a benefit. Does everybody understand that? Now everyone say, I am the kingdom of God. Amen. You're actually a tax deduction. <laughs> Hallelujah. People are going to go, I'm going to start tithing to myself then. <laughs> no. <laughs> it says, bring your tithes to the storehouses. Amen. So in this arena, we want to come into a place where we are not using this freedom incorrectly. We are not using this freedom to advance the works of the flesh, our own kingdom. We are using this freedom to advance the kingdom of God and using the technology to advance the kingdom of God. See, where your heart truly is, God knows. He knows what you're doing. He knows whether you're working for yourself or you're working for him. That's why the word says labor on to the Lord. He knows. In Galatians chapter 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. Labor in vain. Galatians chapter 2. There was a testimony about a person who went to hell and said there was a lot of vain people that they knew physically that ended up in hell. Because usually vain individuals promote sin and don't even know it. In verse 1, Galatians 2 verse 1. Let's speak it. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by what? Revelation. And communicated to them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren 
secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our freedom which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into what? Bondage. Believe me, the enemy will send people in your life, I guarantee it, to try to bring you back into bondage. I've seen it over and over and over. Old friends, old acquaintances, old places of employer, employees, that try, and look at, they don't even know they're being used by the devil. Do you understand that? Oh, you are on my heart. I thought I'd call you. Hey, what are you doing? You want to come out and have a drink? You know, we haven't seen each other in a long time, man. Let me, let's just go see a movie together. But you know what the leading is because the Holy Spirit tells you all things to come. He guides you to all truth. That's if you're filled with the Spirit. Other than that, you're being set up for a trap. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And verse 4, and this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our freedom which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us again into bondage to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Again, false brethren secretly brought in to remove our freedom in Christ and bring us into a bondage of deception. Believe me, there will be many people now who will rise up and call themselves Christians, even employers, and you'll find out by their fruits what's the truth. Amen? Oh, glory. Turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. The enemy will try and sway you to do things that, you know, is displeasing to God. Now, it may not be displeasing to man. In fact, it might be all right in the eyes of man. But it is all right in the eyes of God. That's the key. And if you're not connected in that true relationship with him, then you won't see what God sees. James 1.21 Therefore what? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word of God, which is able to what? Save your souls and convert your souls. But be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. And not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. So listen, there are many people that come to services and Bible studies and training sessions. They hear, but they don't do. What they hear, they just let the enemy steal. Let's go. They don't put it into practice. You know why? Because they're not eating it. They're not eating it. Before it can even get digested, the devil's stolen it already. That's why the word says, feed on God's faithfulness. Eat his flesh and drink his blood. This is his flesh. Drink in the blood is his worship. For, for Verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. Oh. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a what? Mirror. He's a hypocrite. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty. Now listen, there's a perfect law of liberty. It's called the perfect law of freedom. That perfect law of freedom is called deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That is the perfect law of freedom. And when that law is interrupted, freedom is lost. Does everybody get it? Freedom is exchanged. Freedom is sold. That is the perfect law of freedom. When it is interrupted, broken, 
and not manifest it in your life or practice in your life, you begin to sell your freedom and don't even know it. It's being exchanged. Again, what is the perfect law of freedom to? Deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight and follow. Because if you're not a fighter, you're a loser. You will lose the battle and the enemy will take you out every time. That's why we train people to fight spiritually. It's a spiritual fight. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. But he who, who looks into the perfect law of freedom or liberty and does what? Continues in it. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be what? Blessed in what he does. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Then you got to manifest the perfect law of freedom. If any of you among you thinks he's religious, I get a lot of people to tell me, I'm spiritual. Yeah, I'm, I'm very spiritual. What does that mean? Well, I'm just spiritual. What do you worship? Stones? Doorknobs? A, guy, a God you don't know? Amen? That's not spiritual. You want to be spiritual? You need to be dead. Hello? To yourself. If any among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion for God, before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their troubles and keep yourself unspotted from the world. Amen? Keep yourself, look at, this way he says, lay down all this evil influence and wickedness and stand fast, hold on to the word and promises of God so that you can hold on to your freedom. Hold on to your freedom. So you look at, when you're fighting, one of the things you're breaking off is fear. Amen. To maintain freedom, you must break off fear. Amen? To maintain freedom, you must break off lust. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Listen, the enemy's going to come with fear, oppression, guilt, and shame. Amen? That's how he comes. He comes with sin. He comes with bondage. He's always trying to do is reconnect you back again into bondage. He tries to convince us every single day to sell our birthright of freedom. Every day. Even while you sleep, he tries to attack you. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, the perfect law of freedom is in Christ Jesus. As we are hearers and doers and followers, by keeping ourselves away from the stain of lust, and doctrines of deceptions, then the perfect law of freedom falls into place as we continue to deny ourselves, pick up the cross and fight so we can follow. We are not to be promoters of ourselves. We are not to surrender to sin. But we are to fight and follow Jesus. Too many people quit. They just quit. They're flighters, not fighters. 2 Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians 3. Holding on to your freedom. You know, the Holy Spirit is always revealing to us if we're really hearing and paying attention and aware. He's always revealing to us something that's trying to interrupt your freedom. He'll always expose it. Again, he, he tells you things to come. And there may be something that you've attached yourself to that you don't even know is trying to penetrate and steal your freedom. But he's always revealing it. If you'll ask him, Lord, expose to me. Ask him. Expose me those things that are offensive to you and cause me to stumble. Ex ask him. 
Show me what it is that causes me to stumble. Remove it from me. Sometimes I say, man, don't even show me. Just take it. Take it. But see, there's got to be an open communication with your creator. If there's not an open communication with him in everything, how can you maintain freedom? You'll be easily distracted. You'll step on the traps of the enemy. And you'll bite the bait of Satan. 2 Corinthians 3.16 Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord, there's what? Freedom. There's liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Everyone say transformed. Into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're being transformed constantly. As long as you're allowing the transforming to continue. You're not a transformer. You're being transformed. Amen? The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit dwells, there is freedom. In John 6, John chapter 6, Is everybody okay? John 6 and 63. John 6, 63. What does it say? It is the spirit who what? Gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are what? Life. Now again, the spirit gives life. His words are life. The law of freedom, the perfect law of freedom, again, is to deny yourself. That means to die to yourself. So for freedom to be established, for life to be established, there first must be death. Does everybody get this? Why? Because we live a resurrected life. It's resurrection power. That's why you are born again. It is a new resurrected life. But that life is sustained by your death. Oh, glory. And where the Spirit of the Lord is then, because of the place that you have died to, see, you may be dead to one area, but you ain't dead in another. Hello? I, I run across a lot of people that say, yeah, man, I don't drink no more. I don't party no more. I don't smoke no more, but I still do pornography. Well, you ain't dead yet. Some people are still hunters. They hunt the opposite sex instead of waiting for God to send the right woman or, or man. They spend more time looking and hunting then they spend seeking God. Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. Let's go a little further. Colossians chapter 3. We must fight for your freedom. At flight, we must hold on. And the word says, those who hold on to the Lord, the Lord holds on to them. Those who let go of the Lord, the Lord lets go of them. Oh, yes. So where does this fight? It's called intercession. It's called prayer. It's called for strikers. It's called using the keys of the kingdom. It's called using the weapons of God. His name, his word, and his blood. 
that's utilizing these and attacking the enemy before you get attacked. Why? And everything that you and I do, we must deny ourselves. Does everybody get it? We must deny ourselves. In everything, even in purchases. Not that you can't purchase stuff for yourself. Do you understand that? The word says, acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. And what's he going to do? Guide your path. He's going to establish your steps. Everything you and I do, God wants to be a part of. Everything. That's why we're to set the Lord before us. He wants to be a part of everything. Everything. All your purchases, your fun, your sorrows, everything. Your sicknesses, your trials, your tribulations, everything. That's why the word says, those counted all joy. When, not if, you go through trials and tribulations. Why? Because you're going to count a joy because he's with you. If I'm going through it, he's going through it with me. And he paid the price for the escape. But it says that you and I should be partaking of the sufferings of Christ. That we may partake of the resurrection power. Amen? So in this, this is the era where you and I are looking to die to everything that would promote the flesh and self. So that the spirit can dwell there. Because that's only the place where life is, only where death is. Um, where did I say to go? Colossians? Colossians. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Does everybody get in this? Okay. Glory. You can put all the lists, start writing your list down of the places you believe you ain't dead yet. <laughs> And if you're having a hard time, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. he gladly help you. Colossians 3, verse 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you what? Whoa! For you what? You what? You died. And you're what? Your life is hidden with Christ in God, if you died. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death. Everyone say, put to death. <laughs> kill it. Come on, say, kill it. Kill it. <laughs> Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, which are fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these, what? Anger. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Why? Because he's saying we need to die to all of this. Those are areas of death. Do not lie. That's an area of death. People lie because they're still protecting themselves. Don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the what? The new man. The new man who was renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Do you get, come, grab hold of that? So you have been renewed in the knowledge of his image. So stop looking at you in the mirror. Start seeing Christ in you. But if you ain't dead to you, how can you see Christ in you? Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And have put on the new man who was renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in what? 
and in all. You died and you live now. That's why we sing that song. Twice dead, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm twice alive. I was alive to sin, death, and hell. Headed there. Now I'm dead to sin, death, and hell. And alive to eternity. Because everywhere where there's death in my life, there is life. Everywhere there is death in my life, there is the Spirit of the Lord who dwells there and brings me life, peace, joy, and righteousness, and I get to drink more. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Philippians. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians 1.27. That's why we have a good saying around this ministry, it's a good day to die. <laughs> People grumble and complain, man, you need to just die. <laughs> you need to tie that tongue into a bow and make it look something good. Philippians 1.27, let's speak it. Only let your what? Conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast, hold on, in the spirit, in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to what? To say what? I'm sorry. Say what? Louder. Suffer. To suffer for his sake, having the same confidence which you saw in me, and now here is in me. Wow. Holding fast to the spirit and faith in the message of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, you're going to suffer. What's the suffering? To bring death. To bring death. There is no life without death. None. Luke 9. Luke 9. So when the devil tries to kill you, you can tell him. You can't kill what's already dead. What is the perfect law of freedom, liberty? To what? D deny yourself. Pick up the cross and fight and follow. That is the perfect law. Luke 9, 23. Luke 9, 23. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to them all, you notice that word all? If anyone desires to come after me, are you here because you're desiring to come after him? Amen. Well, if you're not, you're in trouble. If anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Forever desires to save his life or what? Lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Save it. There it is. That's the ticket of the perfect law of liberty. Freedom. For what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? Forever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man, will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and the holy angels. But I tell you truly that there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. I believe that many of us are never going to taste death. I believe that we're going to be taken home. 
It's coming. We're in the greatest harvest that's happening. We are in the seven years of plenty before seven years of famine. It is the gathering of souls like never before, but it's also the falling away of souls. Because the falling away must come first before the son of perdition is revealed. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to close at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter five. And you know, death for a believer in this arena doesn't really taste death. It's a taste of life. Because we don't die. We die on this side to self. We may give up our last breath to stay on this side, but we don't die. You got to remember something. Every spirit that's brought into this world and put on flesh still is that spirit. That spirit, that person, that character either goes home with the Lord or to hell. It doesn't die. It's either in life eternity forever or life in hell forever. It's either in torment or peace and joy. But the spirit doesn't die. Amen? The spirits didn't die when the uh, Rephilim, right? The Nephilims. When the giants and so forth and the fallen angels went into women and produce offsprings, even when God killed the whole world, their spirits didn't die. In fact, the ones from the Nephilims that were offsprings became demons, and they're still alive right now, aren't they? And they're using human hosts to get around, to be fed, until this whole realm was changed. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. Oh, yeah. Is everybody there? See, people still don't even believe in demons. And when they don't, it's because they have them. It's called a lion demon. Verse 16, is everybody there? Therefore, from now on, we what? Regard no one according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is dead to self. Amen. He is practicing and performing and executing the perfect law of freedom. If he's truly in Christ. Then what happens? He is a what? New creation because he's practicing the perfect law of freedom. All things have passed away and all things have become what? New. So there's a process where the old things are behind you. And what tries to come up in front of you is removed from the old. It's always being removed. Unless there's still open doors from the old. There's still emotional attachments from the old. There's still those things, those spirits that are still attached from the old. Therefore, if anyone in Christ is a new creation, old things pass away, and behold, all things have become new. Verse 18. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ. God was in Christ Jesus. That's why he's called God. Reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are what? Ambassadors who practice the perfect law of liberty. For Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
That we may become the, you can't become the righteousness of God unless you're practicing the perfect law of liberty. Because the righteousness will be a fruit of your freedom. Does everybody understand that? Everyone say, the righteousness of God will be the fruit of my freedom. By practicing the perfect law of freedom or liberty, which is to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow, because where there is death, there is life. This is how we hold on to freedom. Amen? Everybody got it? You going to practice it? You going to do it? You going to fight and not flight? Cool. You'll be tested. <laughs> Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your word. Lord, grab hold of us tonight. And let the impartation of your word, of your seed of life, spread through our whole complete being and members. Expose those areas we still need to die to so we can turn those places over completely to the Holy Spirit to dwell. Because only where there is death to self is there life to Christ. Lord, I pray blessing over each and every one. I ask that you'll Grant them the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to discern and to practice that which you have released into the atmosphere and into our spirit and into our soul and into our memory. That we may be sons and daughters that please you going from glory to glory, changing and transforming into your image daily in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen? Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.